with a family and a direct caregiver who takes care of a special child. You want to just say your first name? Teresa. Teresa and Tristan. Tr Tristan. Tristan. Minorca. Okay. We're here today and it's important because I want the world, to, I want to put a face on our children and those who care for our special children. People know and hear about us, but I don't think they really know unless they have a family member that has uh, a life of understanding the needs of people with disabilities and how difficult it is, but how rewarding. Because I always said as a parent myself that the love we get back, that we get from our special child who never spoke, it is just what unconditional love. It's a love that not many people really experience. And God gave us special children. They're angels, I believe, sent to us to give us love and to make the world aware that we, the people that are sitting here right now, as a parent and as a caregiver and somebody who is dedicating my life to advocate, God gave me this mission that we can make people aware of how important it is to have the resources necessary to be successful, giving dignity and equality of life to our families. So if you'll tell us about Kristen and his care and anything you would like to share. Well, um, I am glad and I appreciate the caregivers that take care of Tristan. They're really, really nice and um, he lo he's not one to you know, to be very easy, but they know how to work with him. They find ways of like his likes and dislikes, exactly. and they work with that. And um, basically, that I don't mean like. Well, you um, know, every child, the diversity of need, whether it's medications mm -hmm. or it's food, or ability to even have food, or either with a feeding tube or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they are human beings, yes. and they have life experiences. And, and my thing too is that. I'm they not choose. Fine guys. <laughs> they they um they don't really have to do this, but they do it. They do it, and they do it so well. You know, like a lot of people might not want to do it. They are not doing it for the money. At least the ones that are you know the ones that are dealing with him, they don't do it for the money. They really working with him, yeah. and they really like. I don't know what I'll do without them. Oh, I, really I, don't know. I, I understand because they're overworked and underpaid. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And what you just said is, is so true. You know. But it's so important to give yes. the, the dignity and respect yes. of the individual and person. Yes, and I agree with you. Because I also do know a lot of them that had to leave the job. I know a lot of them that dealt with him, and I really got to know them as family members. You know that I love them as family members, and a lot of them had to leave. Yeah. And they had to get better jobs with better pay because they couldn't. You know, can't survive they, yeah, they couldn't survive. Bills. They couldn't take care of their kids. Well, that'll be they, a, you can tell us. About yeah, that. they couldn't <laughs> do a lot. Yeah, so they left, and they didn't want to because they loved my son a lot. But because of the financial, they had to choose, and a lot of them left. Oh, I know. Yeah. We have, uh, and I would, I'd like the governor to be aware of yeah. this as well. And they people should. are making decisions to mm -hmm. understand the quality of life. And the care is so necessary. Yes. But when people are flipping hamburgers, making more money than exactly. other people who are taking care of other human beings, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with You're our system. Right. You're right. You're right. And he's happy. Yes. <laughs> and he's behaved. He's a good boy. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell us. You're here representing the most overworked, underpaid people, I think, in our society. Yes. How long have you been? I've been in this field for two and a half years, and the uh, funny thing is, like, this is my real first job taking care of people with disabilities. Like, be my, like I say, my my special people. That's right. That's, yeah, that's what I call them. They my special people, and I'm here. Like you said, it's not for the money. Most of the pay is not enough for the quality of life that we're living now. Friends kids, child care, transportation, it's not because of that. I'm here and I do what I do for them. Because if I'm not here or I have to leave somebody that doesn't understand what they, their behaviors or what they eat, might not be able to deal with them the same way. Oh, I know. I have, I've been over 50 years. Oh. 
and the reality is that if you don't have trained professional staff, that and, and, and when I said trained, it's interesting because the courses and the ability, they, they're giving medications, they, they have first aid, they have all these other uh, aspects of life mm -hmm. that they have to learn. And every child, basically, we have a, a diversity of need because every kid is basically different, whether they're eating and they're you get to know them and you're part of their life. And a lot in residential situations, and I'm sorry to say this, a lot of people with families leave their kids yes. and the family becomes a direct caregiver. And yes. then when that person leaves, it's devastating because it's another loss in the child's life. Yes. So we have dedicated parents and families and we have dedicated people providing the direct care. But this is something that we just have to make people aware that the priority priority in government is really to take care of people that need the most and people with disabilities is I would say the most discriminated group of people in our society in this country so with you speaking out and let me tell you I have friends who've been direct caregivers for 32 years and I can tell you stories about people one one lady that I know and I work with was prepares all the food 16 residents every day and she said she can't pay her bills she's going to have to leave and she's been there for many many years so she went to a school district and they opened her a job in the cafeteria and they had more money better hours and I mean, it's so sad because this wonderful beautiful lady was going to leave our kids and they came back a week later and she was there and i said what happened she said i couldn't leave our kids so because you get emotional but there's the love that's yes. there. You grow attached to people you see every day. You wake up and see them every day. They become part of your family. They say you're not supposed to get attachments um, emotionally, but it's very hard not to. Like, come on, you basically live with them most than you live with your own family. I see my kids, what, maybe three hours of a day? They in school. Are you working a second job? No, but I go home, I leave my job, I go home, do two hours of homework, they go to sleep. I'm in my job from, technically from eight to five. Yeah, and I know so many people that are working two shifts, yes. double shifts. So with people leaving in the state of New York, the crisis is going to be there to be able to provide the care that's necessary, dignity, respect, and health and safety. And I thank you because it's nice to see a young person have the feelings that you do and your priorities are certainly in the right right place when you think that the love you get is is, is so much more than the dollars that are involved but just don't have to pay your bills and i and i um, as a parent um it's hard for the children and also for the parents to have to when they leave because they're not getting paid enough to have to train somebody again, oh. to have to, for them to get used to them again. Because like him, he lives by routine. So having to start all over again with somebody new, you don't know what we go through and what he goes through. Oh, I do. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm saying not I you, know. I'm saying in general. Know. And what we have to go through is so hard to always have to, every couple of, like a couple of months or a year, to start all over again to start training again and showing them what he likes, dislikes, his attitude and everything, and him to get along with somebody else new. So, you know, it's hard, it's hard. And most of the time I'm like, I wish I could be rich, so I could be paying someone, so I could have that one person that's gonna be there for him and, you know, help out with me, whatever, because I know that financial, it's hard for them. Well, you know? how lucky he is <laughs> and how lucky you are to have him. Yes, yes. Remember, oh, God sent you an my, angel. Of course, this is my baby. <laughs> I thank you all very thank much. You. Thank you. You know, your voices are going to be heard, you're going to be seen. So other people will get a different perspective from things that they don't know. And we should really focus on what our kids can do, not yes. what they can't do. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.